Hey, what is up you guys? It is me, Savage Coasters, and I hope you're doing well because I'm doing f***ing awesome. Today we are going to talk about one of the coasters that stirred up quite the discussion in the 2018 season, Hyperion. Hyperion is an Intamin hypercoaster located at Energylandia in Zader, Poland. Standing at a height of 252.6 feet tall, Hyperion is Europe's tallest non-launch coaster. Its 269 foot drop has riders hurtling at a top speed of 88.2 miles per hour, giving Hyperion the title of the fastest non-launch coaster in Europe and the second fastest on the continent overall. The massive coaster is known for its enormous airtime hills and multiple low to the ground transitions. Many enthusiasts may recall the park's ongoing process of selecting the ride, as they let the public choose between two variations of the ride. One variation was made by Vacoma, which featured a much larger spaghetti bowl section than its competitor, the Intamin model. Both concepts looked to be amazing, and the kosher community was pretty divided on which one they thought would be better. Many people wanted the Intamin to win due to Intamin's steady history of building amazing airtime machines, such as Skyrush, while others wanted the Vacoma to win, due to the fact that Vacoma is absolutely killing the coaster game right now. After rides such as Let Coaster opened, people were curious how a coaster over twice the size would fare. Personally, I preferred the Intamin coaster, as I like the sustained airtime hills, stangle dive, and extremely comfy restraints the Intamin concept had that the Vacoma did not have. The Intamin coaster ultimately won, and that started a series of two more significant layout changes the park went through before finalizing the layout we have now. The hype behind this ride throughout the enthusiast community was crazy as the ride was being built. Hundreds of POV judges were certain we were going to get an even larger, more intense version of Skyrush. Before the ride had even tested, the Instagram community was pretty certain we were getting a world's best coaster. Then the ride opened, and the reviews started to come in, and it's just okay. Many people online were stunned to hear the initial reviews of the ride coming in far under what the POV judges had deemed as fact. So that brings us to today's video. Why Hyperion sucks. In a similar situation for my Hakuge video, it doesn't. The ride's f***ing great. The first drop on this ride is crazy. It feels like it goes on forever. The best way I could describe the first drop is if Intamin built a slightly stronger version of Fury 325's drop. The tunnel is also another cool touch in the ride, giving riders a nice head chopper element as they reach speeds of over 88 miles per hour. Exiting the tunnel, the ride enters one of the tallest sustained ejector hills in the entire world. The ejector on this hill is absolutely awesome, and it feels like it goes on forever. Is it as strong as the ejector on rides such as Skyrush or Expedition G-Force? No. But does it really need to be? I certainly don't think so. After the enormous airtime hill, you enter one of the ride's best elements. This dive loop has even more great ejector entering the element and some crazy lateral Gs while twisting on the outside seats. There are not many elements in the world that give a similar feeling to this. But it is an element I hope many rides start to incorporate in their layouts as time goes on. A small stangle dive right after the dive loop is another highlight of the ride. On the right wing, you get absolutely folded over with laterals while going through the element. A small speed bump after sends riders into another large airtime hill. The only difference is that this hill is not ejector. It is weak, weak, weak floater. In the middle part of the train, there was no airtime at all. Normally, I don't mind floater because I know the general public is a huge fan of it. But even the standard riders on Hyperion did not seem to be a huge fan of it. It just really didn't do anything special, and after just experiencing an amazing first half to the ride, the floater hill just felt tame. A cool overbank sends riders into a half-assed attempt at a spaghetti bowl section. Another speed bump and stangle dive gives some more great airtime and laterals, but the low to the ground turn and S-curve after left me wanting more. The forces were pretty much non-existent and just do not live up to the hype of the rest of the ride. Then came a surprise. The two strongest airtime moments on the ride are the small hill before the water effect and the hill entering the brakes. If the strength of the airtime of these last two elements was throughout the entire ride, it would easily be a top 10 coaster. One aspect of the ride I wish was talked about more was the theming. I really like the entrance sign, where riders enter through the O in Hyperion. 
I also was surprised at how high quality the indoor section of the queue line was, with its blue lights running through the entire building, giving the entire indoor section an awesome, modern, sort of spacey vibe to it. Overall, I think this ride is absolutely awesome, but there were areas to improve upon. I think that Intamin has started to play it a little bit safe ever since I-305 and Skyrush were flops to the general public, but I am super excited to see how Intamins, such as the Busch Gardens Williamsburg multi-launch and the Wallaby Belgium mega coaster end up being, as I believe Intamin is slowly moving back up to their crazy ejector and positive heavy routes. Hyperion, albeit not as crazy as older Intamins, still proves to be one of the best rides in the world. As of filming, the ride barely makes it into my top 20 coasters, sitting at the number 20 spot. And that about wraps it up for today. What do you think about Hyperion? Sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your post notifications so you will be the first to see what I upload next. If you want to follow me around on all of my various coaster trips, Follow my Instagram account at savage.coasters for even more content. See ya!